plant-based pork substitute has been launched at CES by one of the leading alternative meat producers. A food product unveiled at the CES Tech Show? You betcha. Hmm. There's some serious tech involved in creating this sustainable alternative to meat. The new product contains no gluten, animal hormones, or antibiotics, and is designed to comply with kosher and halal rules. <laughs> the firm's sausage and plant-based pork products, similar to ground beef substitute, are made using heme, a molecule derived from plants that contains iron and resembles blood. Heme is found wow. in real meat, but can be produced without farming animals. Impossible Foods founder and chief executive Patrick Brown says their expanding product uh, says of their expanding expanding product line, quote, "We won't stop until we eliminate the need for animals in the food chain and make the global food system sustainable." End quote. Beyond that, Impossible Pork contains around half the calories of sausage meat and is also significantly lower in fat. Until recently, China was home to around half the world's farmed pigs, but millions of them have died or been culled due to the spread of the African swine fever, a viral disease that infects pigs and has no known cure. Pork is huge, in huge demand in Asia. China alone produces and consumes more of the meat than any other country. Impossible Foods say that their synth synthetic pork product will suit a variety of Asian dishes. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. We're we're at that point where, like I I think I said on a show years ago, won't it be neat when they can synthesize this? Right, and they're here. They are in that that tricky little spot where they're just about to tip right over into mm -hmm. full synthesization. I can't speak, but um, but it, what's weird about it from a technology standpoint is that it's like meat, like it's not like ground mushrooms held together with gluten, right. That's where I have a hard time. So I don't eat meat, but I don't eat meat because I don't like meat. And so I okay. don't like the impossible So that's different from the ethical exactly. or um, sustainability perspective. Exactly. Whereas like people who want to eat healthier or want to, mm -hmm. to tread lighter on the earth, I'm happy that all of those things are happening in my life, but that's not the reason I don't eat meat. Okay. So once they're able to do bacon... I think that that's the point when everybody in this whole world is going to be like... <laughs> and everyone who says, but they have vegetarian bacon. But it's not. It's the not. Same. <laughs> Cause I, and I can tell you that because I like the vegetarian bacon and I don't like bacon. So that means mm. that it doesn't Weird. taste like bacon. How do you not like bacon? <laughs> no. Do I do like I, flavors. on the other hand, eat meat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And but But I've tasted a lot of these alternatives. Yeah. Have you tried the Impossible Burger? Does anyone sell it? Um, yes. Plenty of places, including grocery stores. Any, and it's very Any expensive. restaurant exam? Um, um, I think the... Um, what's the one? On I think the one that I've tried is Beyond Burger, not Impossible Burger. Right. That's, that's what, A&W or something? Yeah, A&W yeah. has them. Have you tried yeah. it? Mm -hmm. And? It was good, <laughs> but it was tougher than beef. Okay. It didn't have a nice, soft, like, beef tenderness it was tougher like it seemed glutinous to me okay so but that so i yeah it was good but i wouldn't go out of my way to buy it personally but if you were a vegetarian or a vegan and right. needed an alternative then it's a reasonable alternative and and i mean if in china they're having a, a big pork shortage this is it and uh, they use full flavored dishes right so mm -hmm. i think that really just mimicking mimicking the texture is probably all sure. you really need to do because it's not always needed like i mean if you have some soup and you want to just have like a couple of meaty chunks in it like <laughs> throw in some pork alternative whatever exactly. what works. i want to know though is how did it end up at ces because of the technology right involved. but what technology i know i want to know like, more about it that, i want to know like more you guys about are sitting there going meat no meat i'm thinking meat good bacon good pig yeah. good how you do but the how thing. they do exactly yeah. like what is it about the tech that makes this happen because jeff they clearly about the it's science it's but science. the fact science. that there's a tech that pulls a specific thing out of plants that to is then produce it, like, it's like the same thing that comes out of meat yeah, like that in and, and it's like they're crazy. creating synthetic meat from plants what happens to the but, it, the but it's di that's what i mean by it's different from ground up vegetables right. held together with gluten mm -hmm. it's not like texturized vegetable no. protein it's like 
It's like meat. It's like in meat. a lot of ways. This is like it's very where, very similar. That's yeah. where I. That's where it they're gets getting to, to that the, point. Yeah. I still yeah. want real bacon. It's like the petri dish. This is not, but like when we've talked about the petri dish meat that is grown in a dish yes. that has never actually been an animal. That just right. sounds gross. It, yeah, it totally does. <laughs> But, From a sustainability standpoint, though, I do understand that there's too much factory farming going on. I understand that. Yeah. And, you know, for health's sake, I'm going to, like, eat healthier. Right. I'm not, I'm still eating meat, but I'm not eating as much right. of unhealthy stuff. I just don't cook my eggs on my bacon grease anymore. See? <laughs> healthier. Perfect. Moving right along. That's Jeff's solution. <laughs>